Yeah, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we're going to look at a little tool haul from Engineer, Japanese tool manufacturer, for a couple of the loadouts that I am currently building up. Start off with these three sets of pliers here. Uh, these are the screw extraction pliers from Engineer, um, similar to a set of combination pliers. This set, and these are eight inches or two hundred mil total length. And you see you have a standard cutting edge, um, I guess a hex head screw gripping section just there. And then your standard jaws for a combination plier. But you have in this set at the end here, so you can grip from the end a screw head that is uh, fairly unique to engineer. Maybe uh, there's a couple of the manufacturers that are copying it now. Uh, but that's those there. And you also have a grip. Uh, between two handles here as well and the handles they're a soft rubbery feel to them they have a design um, not how well you can see this if we can get this right in the camera you see like a little channel that's made down here in the handle that's to stop these from being twisted in use um, which i think again is a, another feature fairly unique to engineer uh, these ones uh, came from amazon uh, PZ59 and they sail for £22, so fairly reasonable price um, for these in the UK for a set of uh, combination pliers. Um, alongside those, I've got the long nose version of these. These are the PZ60s, uh, also retail for £22 from Amazon. And you've got the cutting edge in this, you've got the serrated jaws at the front here, and then again at the very end there, you've got the serrated jaws for gripping screws from the vertical direction if you like. Um, there is no set of jaws in between the handles here for gripping. Uh, similar sort of design in the handles, certainly the soft uh, rubberized feel to them and then the channel here is a little bit smaller, the cutout to stop them from twisting but it is still there. Um, and then I think, I perhaps didn't measure on this, there's, both of these have tether points so you can put a tool tether in there should you need to. Um, that's those two sets of pliers. Um, the final set of pliers are these vice grip, uh, mold grips we used to call them in the UK, uh, pliers also from Engineer. These are the PZ67. These are actually from Precise Hand Tools uh, on eBay and these were for £27. Um, fairly standard, they are actually smaller than the combinations. Um, losing out to about an inch, so about seven inch, um, so a little bit smaller than I had imagined. But there you go, against a standard set, these are a standard ancient set of mole grips, vice grips, whatever you want to call them. Slightly different jaw shape to them. Uh, what's immediately obvious is you're missing the adjusting screw at the end here that would close the jaws, that would put more tension on them. Um, what you do have it on the set, it's tucked away just underneath the handle here you can see if I can get the light right I'll have to see how well it comes out like a little imprint of the adjuster screw just there and if you flip the handles open you can see that's your adjustment screw that you can turn by hand and uh, set the pressure on the jaws that way so the problem being of course that you can't adjust that whilst pliers are closed whereas with the original set you can adjust that at any time with the jaws open or closed, it doesn't matter. And you've got constant access to it, whereas here uh, you don't have, unfortunately. Um, but that's those there. So uh, those out of the way. They are for a uh, breaker maintenance loadout that I'm working on. And the rest of them are tools for my uh, protection relay testing loadout, mostly in regard towards PCB repair and component replacement. So this is a little magnifying loop also from Engineer. This is the SL-36. It's a five times magnification and it is illuminated as you can see there. Uh, batteries are two C-type batteries stored in the handle here uh, which did come with the actual uh, magnifier itself. And the handle just twists on and that is all you get. The only thing that I have noticed is that in order to get this to work you do need to have whatever you're viewing but pretty much close up against the bottom surface here 
otherwise it's just out of focus where you have componentry like this that is stuck up uh, if you are situated right over then you will be able to see through I'll see if I can get a picture of that um, but if you're kept away from the component surfaces so by a heat sink or something like that you will find that these are all blurry again so that's the only downside to having this it's not like a general magnifier you could have spaced away from the board you've got to be right up on top of the board to look at what you need to look at uh, and if I can get the view right on this you will see there is actually a measurement scale within the head of the magnifier there um, so that's those let's say they are SL36 is the part number on them uh, these also came from Precise Hand Tools um, for £35, so fairly expensive. So whilst the PCB is still here, I've got this trim pot tool adjuster as well. Uh, this type here is just the type with the blade that comes out the handle, so it doesn't have the shroud in it around it. Um, it fits on these kind of pots here, if we can zoom in as close as we can get. So it will fit into these uh, adjustment pots here, they're nice and easy and turn them, there's no problems. You can get it to work on these other potentiometers that are around, but obviously there's a danger you can slip out. It doesn't have the shroud around it to lock it in there, but it is sitting in there quite tight. Um, so I'll have to see how I get on with this. I might well change this out for, you can get double-ended versions of this with a little blade protruding there and also the other end with it shrouded, but it's not like a normal screwdriver shape. So I may change it out for that if I don't get on with this, but that's that one there. Uh, precise hand tools again is where I purchased it. Part number is a DA01, and this will sit back seven pounds. One of the other tools I've bought is this solder sucker from Engineer as well. Part number is SS-02. Um, beautiful piece of engineering, all aluminium engineering this. Uh, very very nice indeed it is a little bit smaller than solder suckers that I've had before it's a general one there so it is a little bit smaller which can be advantageous if you're working in tighter areas the other main thing difference with this is the tips here whereas on the old style that I have this the whole nozzle that you have to unscrew this and take it away and you replace the whole nozzle this here just has a little bit of silicon tube stuck over the end um, you take off and you get you do get a spare bit of tube with this uh, and you can just cut it to the length that you want and just slide it back over the end there uh, and then you're working away again no problems um, as I say it did come with a spare tube but you can buy the spare tubes I didn't realize so I bought a set of spare tubes anyway with it you get two in a packet uh, that's SS-16 part number on that one uh, the, these are Placement tips are five pounds. Um, the solder socket is nineteen pounds, and that's those two there. Whilst we do have that there, what I did find is you can take the little tip off of the solder sucker and a bit of silicon tube, and this does fit over the actual trim pot tool as well. So you could use that to prevent you from slipping off of the other type of potentiometers with the brass adjuster on them. Uh, sticking up in the air. Um, it is quite tight so it doesn't work brilliantly but in a pinch you could well use it if you're working in a critical adjustment or in an awkward place. Um, so that's those two there. Uh, solder wise we also got ourselves a little solder stand and cleaning pot. Uh, so you can put your iron on here and it will sit here. Um, it is a little bit loose. Um, there's a bit of a, a notch there to try and prevent this from popping down but if you hit it hard enough it will pop down and then you obviously your iron falls off so I'm not sure where we'll use it as an actual stand but inside here you twist it open and you do have a little cleaner now when this arrived this did arrive with two little sponges here I don't like to use wet sponges for cleaning solder irons so I just bought myself a little bit of uh, of the brass wool cleaner if you like uh, this one's from Duratool uh, these only cost three or four pounds, not much to them. Just cut it down to the size that I needed so that it all sits in there. And then I've got a little soldering iron cleaner to take with me as well. As you can see, this is Engineer again, came from Precise Hand Tools yet again. And this is SS-05, which retails for 12 pounds. 
and that's that there. Um, so those bits and pieces are all going to go into my protection testing loadout that I'm building up. I did buy a couple of other bits and pieces, um, just general solder and the bits and pieces, these pros kit uh, desoldering tools if you like with the little pry bars on them and uh, PCB track cutters, uh, wire brush and the like and then of course with some tweezers on these ones as well uh, for handling components so I did buy them as well but they're not engineer there from pros kit uh, so the rest of it was just like solder and uh, flux pan as well and bits and pieces from from RS components um, so that's those there so that's it for this video thanks very much for watching um, just a little tool haul I've got from engineers I will leave a link to the eBay store for precise hand tools should you want to go and see what they've got to do if you're in the UK uh, as I said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.